Good morning, Church of Acts and Church of Heaven. So, glad to see you all here. Maybe you feel uh, welcome here, and uh, in the name of Jesus, welcome here. So, uh, so far we had a blessed day, a blessed service. I like it, and um, I trust the Lord that He likes us as well, and we worship Him, and we uh, pray to Him, and we glorify His name and what He has done. Uh, today I have, the Lord gives me a topic about um, preaching on uh, condemnation, rejection, and offending from where it comes. That I uh, found it interesting. I have uh, in my past a lot of things what was happened. And uh, a lot of things what I saw that, that was starting from condemnation and rejection and offending. Of foundation that I felt like uh, people was offending me or rejecting me or condemning me so that uh, that are the three things what I wanted to br uh, see if I can bring it out that it is clear for you and maybe and my prayer is that the Holy Ghost will help you to understand what the point is what I want to bring out the first thing is on uh, condemnation. From where are coming the feelings of condemnations? The feelings of condemnations comes straight from the devil. That are thoughts from the devil. Why? Because the devil wants to destroy us. But not just us, he wants to destroy the kingdom of God. That's what the devil tries to do. And the first thing when he, what he can do is when we start feeding that thoughts. When we start feeding the thoughts of condemnation, we are worthless or we are nothing but us. That's where the devil starts to have success in us. That's where the devil starts to build the kingdom of hell, not of heaven. And um, I want to look a little bit um, from where is coming condemnation, from where can come feelings of condemnation. A lot of times that has started in the childhood by kids. And uh, I want to see if I can explain it. Um, so I was growing up and somebody sent me to do something without explaining to do something. And I went and did it. And then they come back and I did it all wrong. And when they then told me, you know nothing or you are an idiot or something like that. Or when they didn't even tell me that, but when it was in school and I had homework, but I had a feeling that I was, that was not good what I did. That's where it can start uh, condemnation in a, in a life, in a childhood. Some, some kids are dealing with that when they're growing up, but they're not all. Some people going with that when they go bigger, when they grow up, and they felt, and they felt that. When that has happened in your life, you can release that, but just in the name of Jesus. I want to read uh, on the second point what I want to talk about on condemnation is, uh, where we'll go further is Romans 8 verse 1 that says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. That's an awesome words. There is no condemnation in the, in the persons what belongs to Jesus Christ. When we, have a, uh, when we have received salvation, we have accepted Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation. Sometimes we have still that feeling. Condemnation. 
condemnation in our lives or in your life will bring back to sin. The feelings of condemnation, when you're not dealing with that, that brings back to sin. Jesus Christ gives you freedom. I'm not saying that Christians, um, how, we, how we can bring it out, that Christians have to feel that feelings. We can release that feelings. But often is condemnation starting somewhere where we don't think about where it starts. Condemnation is holding your back to forgive people. Condemnation is holding you back to having a successful life. Condemnation is holding you back from repent. Condemnation will ever say you're not good enough. Condemnation is holding you ever the bad things in your life against you. Jesus don't want that we feel condemned. Jesus wants that we bring the freedom out. The third point is, what is the Bible telling us, us about condemnation? Condemnation has a whole process where we have to go through it, and we have to deal with that, but we can do it fast. Condemnation have to do as well with proud. When I am too proud to let condemnation go, then will I struggle with that. Struggling with that thing is not from God. It's from the devil. And that's what the devil tries to bring us ever down with the feelings of condemnation. I'm saying the condemnation is coming from the devil. God is not condemning people. Jesus is not condemning people. We do it by ourselves. We open the door for that. The fourth point is Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. Mark 16. Verse 15 and 16 that says, And then he told them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. The good news is that Jesus Christ is able to set us free, whatever it is. And this, uh, verse 16 says, Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuse to believe will be condemned. So what it needs to be condemned? Just to refuse what God tells us to do. That's where we start. That's where we open the door of the feelings of condemnation. When we are not doing what God wants us to do. God wants us to do, to share the gospel in all the world to everyone, not just to do that person's what we like to share it, that says here to everyone, everyone. That's sometimes hard, but the feelings after sharing the gospel, when Jesus gives you the feelings about that, and you feel good about that. But when you have done it, when you have uh, reject that thoughts or you haven't done, you didn't do it, you didn't share the gospel, and you then go and read the Bible and you find this, they will start a condemnation. What I have done in my life, what I have experienced, repent when I have filled in that. Turn away from that 
and tell to yourself the next time I can do it. The next point that we want to talk about is on rejection. For me, um, rejection is a curse. Rejection is pushing you away from the will of God. And rejection starts giving feeling about Jesus reject us or Jesus reject, reject you. That's where rejection, what rejection is doing in our lives when we are reject. That brings us to a position that we feel like a failure. That I am ever a failure, I can't do anything right or by myself. That's where that starts. Rejection is something what is um, bothering us in a secret place. Sometimes we see people that are working, they're doing the things what we like to do. And my life is often that, that way. Before it was very bad with me. I, I like to try new things, but I like to do things without training. And then I messed up, I broke something, and then I felt rejected by myself. Rejection is bringing in our life that rejects us from studying the Bible or let us train from somebody or when somebody wants to teach us. Rejection will bring us away from that. Rejection, a curse of rejection can be created. This is the second point. The curse of rejection can be created as well in a childhood. Somebody have pushed you beside, maybe the parents, friends, school, church. Rejection will push us away from God. Rejection is drifting us away from God, not driving us to God. Rejection tells ever, you're not good enough. You are not a good person. Or you can't do that. Or you can't figure that out. Sometimes we just have to slow down, relax, studying it. And then the doors are open so that we can go in. Just an example, I'm not a plane flyer, I'm not a pilot. I'm sometimes I'm interested and in I would like to do that. But when I jump in in a plane without training, without that somebody else teaching me, that flight maybe will be very bad. Or even I can crash. Why? Because I didn't take training, I didn't take school for that. I, I do not know what could be happening. I, I don't know the feelings, what it will be in the, in the air. When I go to a school or I look for a good trainer, a good teacher, they will walk with me, they will learn me, and they will make sure the things what he knows to tell me what is dangerous, what, from what you can stay away. Sometimes it's the same thing in, the, in our journey with Jesus Christ. We need somebody to teach us. And when we reject us from learning, from training, that can bring us to rejection and to condemnation. Because we are too proud to learn from somebody else. The third point on rejection is when how you know if you feel like rejected or whatever. When you start serving and every time you serve you see just your mistakes then you feel reject. You feel I am making ever mistakes. 
Rejection is not a solution to go over the mistakes. That brings you down and place that it's, lift, it's lifting you up. Making mistakes is nothing wrong with it, but sitting on the mistakes, that brings you in the wrong place. Uh, in Jeremiah 2.19, an old German that, that's a little bit different, that, that um, says this, this way, may you see your mistakes and learn from them. Like that way is it. And in English, that, that's a little bit different. I want to read it in English. Jeremiah 2.19. But it's a powerful verse still in English for me as well. Jeremiah 2.19. That says, your weakness will bring its own punishment. Your turning from me will, will shame you. Your turning from me will shame you. You will see what an evil, bitter thing it is to abandon to, to the Lord your God and not to fear him. I, the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. And I go to the verse 20. Long ago I broke the joke that oppressed you and tore away the chains of your silvery. But still you said, I will not serve you on very hill and under every green tree. You have prostituted yourself by bowing down to idols. So what is idols? And I believe... I am not worthy enough. When I am believed, I am condemned. When I believe, I am rejected. We can walk away from our weakness. We can go out of it. When we recognize we have a weak spot in our life, that means we have to open that door to be willy, willing to learn more, to be trained more. We can do that with Jesus, but not with our, our own flesh desire. And the fourth point is, <clears throat> rejection is a bondage, a bondage from the devil. The devil likes to holding us back to serve God. The devil likes to that we reject ourselves to doing what we know to do or the gift, what we have, what we can do. Galatians 5 verse 1 uh, talks about um, we are free. So Christ has truly set us free now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in salary to the law. So Jesus Christ set us free. Another translation that says, and don't let put you a joke on. A joke is something that's bringing us down. Jesus has set us free from that. That doesn't say that I have now the freedom to do anything what my flesh wants to do. But the more I will start studying the Bible and the more I will believe and walk what the Bible says, what I can do, the more freedom in Jesus I will produce in my life. The next point is offended people. <clears throat> what does it mean, offended? We are calm. Of foundation in a people, in a person's life, the same thing can start it in your. Maybe it had start in a childhood when people have problems with that. Offend people, they offend people. And offend people. 
Maybe they offend God as well. I found that they offend God usually. Why? Because they not receive when God wants to correct them or when God wants to teach them something or when God wants to train them. They turn away from that. Why? Because nobody have learned them that, how they can learn. Or they have the door closed to not learning what God wants to do. They are very self-right. They have very, uh, they have, um, let's say it this, this way, they are very religion. They know how to correct themselves, but they don't know how to accept correction. Second point is, people that are under the bondage of offending, offending. what means it be under a bondage of offense? A offend person, they have one problem, they wanted to control everything. And when they can't control everything, or how, when they can't control this way what they want to control it, then they are, they are offend. The same thing, they don't want a, somebody to correct them. They wanted to correct everybody, but not themselves. We have to look to the Bible to live our right way, but we can't deal with offend, uh, offendation. I'm not saying when I'm a newborn Christian is, I have to look how can I go with him that he not will feel offend, that I will teach him the right way and train him the right way. I don't know, you maybe I don't have problems with that. But I have sometimes to deal with that and go back and see how can I overcome this. And the third point is often people are offending the truth. And look us, uh, let us see in uh, Matthew 15, 10 to 14. Matthew 15, 10 to 14. It says this way, Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant not planted by my heavenly Father will be uprooted. So ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into the ditch. So the Pharisees was offended. They offend Jesus. Or they was offended by Jesus telling them the truth. In place that they received the truth. That they turned away from untruth. The Pharisees, they knew in his sight, they knew better than Jesus did. But that was the untruth. They didn't receive what Jesus wants to give them. And then Jesus tells that when a person like that wants to guide some, somebody, they want to go boat to the ditch. And almost the time when we go to the ditch, then we're stuck. Like it's now in, in winter, when we go to this ditch in the highway here in Canada, when there's a lot of snow in the ditch, 
they are stuck. They have to call somebody to call them, uh, help them out. And that's what Jesus is talking about, that they will get stuck. They will bring his own, um, they open the door for his own um, punishment. So now I want to um, go over to the last one. What Jesus paid for us. And uh, I was uh, going deeper in this, um, thinking about what Jesus did for me and you. What Jesus did for people. Jesus was ha hanging on the cross, mocked, but not mocked by God, by people, by us. Jesus was hanging on the cross, condemned, not by God, but by people. Jesus was hanging on the cross, Uh, rejected, not by God, but by people. Jesus was hanging on the cross with a punishment from people, but not from God. He was hanging on the cross all over his body blood, all over his body pain. We can tell almost murdered at them, painful, had a door and crown on his head, they had hit him with, a, uh, with something on the head, that means he had pain. And as he was hanging on the cross, he cares for me and for you, under that pain, under that blood. And he was not pointing the finger to someone, how they treat him. He was open to hear and to listen. Is there is somebody what needs salvation? And there was a person beside him, hanging on the cross, open his heart, start speaking out he, that he was a bad person. And, God, and Jesus gave him the opportunity to receive salvation. And Jesus told him, today I want to see you in heaven. I just see Jesus had the bad things. He could re felt reject. He could re felt a useless person. People tried to make him that way. But he didn't let them that. He just was Focus, he was grounded on the word of God. He was grounded on the prophecy from himself. He gives the life up for me and for you. He didn't rebuke us, he received us. He gives us salvation. So, I want to go to prayer. I mean, there's somebody what feels like he wants somebody to him that he, pray, that, that he needs prayer, come to the front. It's not a shame to go uh, for a prayer. And a prayer is not just sometimes when we have problems in our life. A prayer is helping as well for a strengthening. And um, I want to start to pray. And when you feel comfortable wherever you are, uh, release what is bothering you and release the power of the Holy Ghost in your lives.